Freddie Prince Jr. This is his big return. We haven't seen him in a while. And it just feels so right that he's in a rom-com. How exciting was it, you know, working with him? And did he pick up straight where he left off? I know he's a pro, but uh, he had to be a little, uh, you know, not worried, but uh, had to get back into it. Yeah, it's so funny you ask that question because it's now becoming this viral news that come back of Freddie in this movie Christmas with you. But he was actually nervous about coming back on the screen because he hasn't acted in a few years. So at the end, he told me, thank you for making it easy because I was nervous. And I didn't, I didn't realize he was so nervous until he told me at the end and we hugged and we cried and um, he did a wonderful job. He's so talented. Yeah, the movie's so fun. Uh, the two leads are great, Amy and Freddie. They just have a great chemistry. Uh, when did you know that, you know, it was translating on screen and that this relationship was really going to impact viewers? Yeah, I, I, I'm, luckily they knew each other and not a lot, but they like each other. And that was a great start. And then we did a lot of rehearsal to enhance the romance. So I'm glad it translates because a lot of people tell me that they have great chemistry and that's what rom-coms are all about. Yeah, definitely. And the one thing I like about the film is the whole pop star element. Amy's character is so fun. She's doing these choreographed dances, uh, but there's also this element of burnout that she's dealing with, and she's kind of in a, a reflective point in her career. What did you find most interesting about seeing this pop star, you know, not at her peak, but kind of trying to figure out her next steps? We, we, I love that about the story. When I received the script, I love the idea of a pop star that is not, like you said, at his peaks. And then she has to, because she's closed down and not opening her heart. And then we always have made the analogy of what would happen if JLo would go visit, you know, a fan just to grant her Christmas wish and take a photo and then falls in love with the father of the fan. And I think that's, that's a great concept. Yeah, it definitely is. And there's such a great incorporation of so much of Latin culture in the film. How great was it putting in that representation? There's some great, you know, references to telenovelas and uh, there's a great Latin flair to the film. Thank you. Yeah, this is the first time that Netflix does a Christmas movie with all Latino cast and Latinos behind the camera, the producers, Latino, the writer, the director, the composer, and that brings a whole flavor and mixing the Christmas with the Latino music and food, I think it gives it an original, you know, flavor. Yeah, definitely. And there's such a rich history to Christmas movies and Netflix always does a, such a fun job each year releasing a few. What was most exciting about, you know, adding on to this tradition because, you know, we're, we're going back to the 40s and beyond with the uh, great Christmas movies. Yeah, I, I love Christmas movies. And you know, I have done already a, a movie with Netflix called Despite Everything, but this is my second movie with Netflix and I've never done a Christmas movie. And I am so excited that they had the vision to create a new Christmas movie that represents our culture. And then my last question for you, I was curious if you had a favorite Christmas movie that you always break out each holiday season. Yes, I love Love Actually. That's my favorite Christmas movie because it's grounded and it makes you cry every time I watch it. I've probably seen it like 30 times. And I hope people feel the same way about Christmas with you, our movie. And they, they laugh and they cry and they watch it this year and next year and the following year.